I try to get. I don't know if you can get our flag on there. Anyway. I'll try. <laughs> oh yeah. Cute little flag. Um. James, would you just like to tell me a little bit about your sleeps camp here and what you're trying to do? What we're doing is we're protesting um, the camping ban that would caused people to have to go out to the wetlands. And now there was like 200 people removed from there, and I think that's quite an amount of, of people to become immediately homeless when they actually had no place to go. And with the BLM and the ODOT, and the city all working together on this to put the homeless out. Um, there's no, no other place alternative. So I believe that makes all the laws moot because there's no way that you can go on without having to commit a crime, which you cannot uh, find a way to not commit the crime. Just going to sleep is a crime. Yeah, just to go to sleep is a crime. And it's not right. So these laws are, can't even stand with any, with any foundation because um, I believe we have the right to be here right now just because of what happened with Ali Valkyrie. I was one of the protesters up there asleep that were did the federal building and the city hall when Ali Valkyrie was arrested. Um, I wasn't actually arrested because they wanted to save me from that for uh, further um, future occupations for sleeps. And uh, anyway, um, there was people around, out here that were arrested, and I'm not sure there was, I think there was like 20 something, I'm not really sure the amount, but um, they were arrested over here around under the bridge area, and they also were, had their human rights violated, and we just found out that the city's been hiding the fact that they already had the information that their rights were violated and they've been hiding it from the public and we just found out about it. They didn't let nobody know. So what we're doing out here is to help everybody in Eugene um, that don't have a place to go and not only in Eugene, we're hoping that the future will come along that we can help other people. And I would like to see a local homeless bill of rights for Eugene alone. Me too. And I think this should become on the ballot maybe next year if we get the petition signed and I'm not sure exactly how many people but I think it's like 1500 people signatures in 90 days legal signatures that we can get to put it on the ballot and I think if we get it on the ballot I believe that the local people around here sees what's going on and are tired of people having to sleep in front of businesses and anywhere they can that they can actually get designated areas that are demanded through the Homeless Bill of Rights of Eugene that be supplied with toilets and, and, and uh, dumpsters, dumpsters and porta potties, you know, that's why I said toilets, porta potties, dumpsters and uh, places to cook a meal. And uh, we need all these necessities and now the mission has cut down on the ways they're handing out clothing now you have to sign a ticket, uh, show up at 4 o'clock to get any clothing, and um, when you go in to get your clothing, what they picked out is not necessarily what's going to be right for you, and some of the stuff will not fit, even though it's sized, because some of the sizes are different, even though they're supposed to be the same. And you have to really try stuff on. And now, the other day I went over there, I couldn't get a pair of pants, the only thing I got was a t-shirt. I couldn't get socks or nothing like that. They didn't have it, have it in, you know, it's just. And someone like me that's transgender is not even allowed on their property. I can't even go on there to eat, to get clothing, anything. The, the mission won't uh, nope. work with it's you? not dressed like this. They require me to dress as I'm not a man. Mm -hmm. So I have no place to go. If it got below freezing, I'd die up under the bridge frozen. How did you become homeless? <coughs> if you want to talk about it. Lack of work. I'm a co computer programmer. Jobs went overseas. India. Russia. No more work. 
do you still try to find programming I'm jobs? Disabled. Disabled. Yeah. But that's very little money, not enough to live off of, especially when you have two kids. You're supporting a couple kids? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Is, is there anything you'd like to add that you want people to know? The city and the state's making it almost a crime to be homeless. It's making, they're making us all into outlaws, and it's not right. Uh, you fall asleep in the library, they throw you out. You fall asleep out here, they arrest you or give you a ticket. It's just not right. And that's why I decided to join Sleeps. Uh -huh. We at least need a place to be able to throw our sleeping bags down or a tent up and to be able to sleep like a human being instead of on the street in front of a business doorway, scared to death that a bike cop's going to ride by and give us a ticket which we can't pay or throw us out further into the cold. It drops below freezing. It's a question of whether or not the Egan Wurling centers are even going to be open. Yeah. We're treated worse than animals. Animals are given better care than we are. And it's just not right. I understand your, your camp is both a protest and a place to live for now. A sense of community, a sense of family. Yeah. Brothers, sisters, join together. Are, are the police leaving you alone since you've been so camping far. here? So far. Yeah, I've talked to a police officer out here, and um, he just wanted to know what we were doing, and I told him that we were doing a protest for sleeps, and he said, okay, uh, he just wondered, and he left. And this man here, um, he was in the wetlands, forced to live out there, and because he was forced to live out there, him and his wife, she caught meningitis out there because the city had no place for anybody to go. So these people had to go out to the wetlands to live. And his wife passed away from meningitis uh, by, from living in the wetlands because it was highly contagious out there. Yeah. What up? We have necessities that we really need. We have people out here and we could actually make this thing grow a little faster if we had maybe a tent, a gazebo, anything that anybody could donate. Uh, we will take donations of uh, canned foods and stuff like that, that, you know, won't be harmed in the rain or the bugs get in them. And um, we wouldn't mind if we had, somebody could donate some chairs, folding chairs or camping chairs. We could really use that because this ground, um, whatever it was made of before has asphalt in it. It's very hard. It's hard to sit on. It's very uncomfortable. And we could use some chairs. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, you, you, you want to tell people, can you describe to people where they can find you? Okay, we're over here off of 6th and High Street uh, behind the, uh, the St. Vinny's thrift store. And it's across from uh, Good Times Tavern underneath the Ferry Street Bridge. We're in the little opening, opening around the corner, so you won't see us right under the bridge. You kind of like have to walk under the bridge and look over this way and you'll see us.